I'm just gonna wait one minute for a few more people to join, but hello and welcome to the Orca workshop, which I'm about to uh, to teach. How's how's everyone doing? I'm good, you know, excited to talk about my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to get started um, because why not? Welcome, everyone. Um, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this, so uh, just yell at me in the chat if anything goes wrong. Um, I'm very happy to be doing this. Uh, it's particularly happy to be doing it for Baby Castles, um, which I'm sure many of you know, Baby Castles is the best. Please support them in any way that you can um, through With Friends or their Venmo or any other way. Um, they're the best. Um, if anyone watching doesn't know about Baby Castles, they're this amazing underground art video game and sort of interactive fun <laughs> uh, collective and gallery space in New York um, and just ever since they started they've been a, a huge part of my life in, in, uh, in New York they're the best so I'm here today to talk about Orca and uh, as you can see on the screen we, we have Orca here right now um, Orca is an esoteric programming language. It can be used for a lot of things, but it's predominantly used for sequencing music. Um, it was invented by this amazing, amazing duo called Hundred Rabbits, who are um, Divine and Rekka. They're a couple. Um, here's where you can get Orca on their itch, which is sort of 100rabbits.itch.io slash orca. Um, it's free, it's open source. You, I do recommend supporting them if you're able to. Um, they're really amazing. They make all sorts of homebrewed tools and games and just that are all over genres. And um, they make all this amazing open source work from their sailboat, which they live on um, as they wander around the world. Uh, believe it or not. Here's where they are right now. They are sailing from Japan back to Canada. <laughs> so um, 100 Rabbits are really, really, really cool. <laughs> and uh, their broader work um, is definitely worth checking out. Um, Orca, though. Let's talk about Orca. So Orca is very different than most programming languages. It sort of resembles at points John Conway's Game of Life or uh, Dwarf Fortress almost. Um, it, it lives in this grid. It also has certain things in common with data flow languages like Max MSP, which may seem weird for this like terminal aesthetic, but um, it, it does have visual elements to it. Um, I sort of designed this workshop where you don't have to follow, follow along doing everything I do. Uh, if you don't want to, it, it'll definitely work just watching and that should give you enough to be able to start making stuff. If you have any questions, pop in the chat or you can ask me after and, and I'll definitely um, do my best to get to them. What's awesome about Orca is Orca outputs to pretty much anything that you want it to. Um, it, it it works really well with anything that takes MIDI in. Um, so it can be used to control hardware, not just, it doesn't just have to live in your laptop. In fact, I don't know if you can see, but my massive hardware setup is all hooked up to Orca on some CRTs. Um, so it, it plays well with, with sort of anything. Um, it, uh, 
for the purposes of this, to keep things simple for the stream, I actually am just going to two channels in Ableton Live. But you don't have to have something like Ableton Live. In fact, 100 Rabbits makes a great little synth to go with Orca called Pilot, which lives right here, which is, again, open source and free. And um, I can show you what it looks like. It's, it's this little guy right here. Um, and that's, if you just want to make stuff, you can just make stuff using these two tools um, and, and, and be done with it. Uh, so uh, let me get rid of Chrome. Um, so you don't need a, a super fancy thing. Um, but for the purposes of this, I'm mostly just going to use Ableton because I'm only going to use two channels. All I'm going to use is a 909 and a bass, and that's it, just to keep things super simple. And this is just going through two MIDI channels. And, and it's, but it, it, Orca can go to, to anything. Um, so let's get started. When you start up Orca, you get this fancy guide, which is on screen right now. And the short version is, Orca is limited to 26 plus sort of functions, one for each letter of the alphabet. And here, therefore, is the alphabet. And then these punctuations are actually how you send signals to things. So for example, full colon sends a MIDI note, so that's relevant. But you're sort of limited in Orca by both space and uh, the way the language works, which are these operators. Um, but those limits provoke really interesting things. Orca is, um, for lack of a better term, I call it solid state. It's just running. You don't need to like evaluate your code by hitting some keys. You can start and stop it by hitting spacebar. I don't know if you can see the numbers at the bottom stop when I do that. But there's no, it's always just running. Those numbers at the bottom, there is a BPM, which is the 130, which it has a little asterisk next to it. But the thing on top is frames. And frames are the actual like ticking of the clock, which uh, is important to do certain calculations. So here, I'm going to get started. The first operator I'm going to show you is the letter D. And as you can see, I type in 1D4. And there's this little asterisk happening now. Just going bing, 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 bing. And that's what a bang is, is that asterisk. That, that's, that's making something happen. Um, and if, say I make this number two, it'll speed up. If I make it one, it'll just sort of go forever. And what's happening there is this is sort of the rate, and this is modulating the rate. And what's that mo what that's modulating is the, the frame count, the actual clock of Orca. So this big number right here. So we can use that real quickly. I'll, I'll hook this up to a MIDI note. Colon is send a MIDI note. And then it says which channel. In the bottom left, it'll tell you what each character place is. So it's base. Everything in Orca is the numbers 0 to 9. And then the letters represent everything over 0 to 9. So A is 10. B is 11. And it's also everything shifted down because 0 is 1. So channel 1 is 0. And then I'll do octave 1 and then the note C. And hopefully you'll be hearing a bass drum. So one thing I love about Orca, as you just saw, is you can um, kind of play it as an instrument without even doing uh, like super generative algorithmic coding. Like you can just decide while playing with this beat live to change this number to a two, then do a one. Um, but say that I wanted to automate that. Well, there's a fancy little operator. I'm going to mute this for a second. Called C. And that's a clock. 
And that has a, a similar sort of format to the, to the D. And clock is really cool because we can basically set how high we want it to go in the right place. So in this case, I just wanted to go to two if I wanted to automate what I was doing down there. And then in this, you can sort of change the rate of the clock. So I can make it count to two every few beats. But if I want this to sort of automate what I was just doing, I'm going to have to add one to it because we're in this weird base zero language. So let me know if this makes sense. It'll, it'll be a little confusing, but um, I'm going to feed the clock. I'm going to add into this input of this D and then put this clock over it. So there I was able to automate me sort of changing this number that was informing when it was going to bang this MIDI note. So I hope, I hope that makes some, some amount of sense of we're using a clock, we're adding one, so this only goes between one and two instead of zero and one and we're switching it, this eight is controlling when it switches. So if I want it to switch less often, that's, that's sort of how we're controlling it. So a lot of work is building these weird chains of, of letters. Um, uh, that's uh, but the cool thing about it is you compress all this into this incredibly small amount of space um, And it also, you know, looks cool um, So what if though we wanted to trigger things at certain moments instead of just these recycling patterns? Well, then there's this fancy operator back to the guide called F and F you can see says bangs if inputs are equal. So it's an if statement. It's saying if B and A are the same, it will make a little asterisk happen. So let's think about that for a second. Uh, we just got a really good question. What's with uppercase versus lowercase? Uh, I can do this now. I was going to save it for later, but when you do lowercase, it only turns on when there is a bang, which sounds crazy, but um, if you see this clock, it's only counting up when it is banged. And I can, I'll explain it more in depth later on, but it's a way to sort of turn things on and off, turn whole sections of your code on and off. Um, all right, but let's right now I'll focus on if statements just to show you how to really quickly um, build a beat. And you open the guide by hitting on Apple Command G. Um, I forget what it is on Linux and PC, but it's something similar. Um, but so an if statement. Well, uh, let's use an if statement real quick to sort of build a beat. So. One really easy way to do this is to put a clock above this if statement. And now I'm doing the same thing. I'm saying this MIDI channel, this octave, and this is just because I know what the drum machine is, basically. Um, and I'm gonna make the clock go up to eight. And now there's this clap. And I can do the same thing I'm going to do an if statement, and this time I'm going to make it two, and I'm going to make the clock above it go to four, and then I'm going to make the zero, one, A. So there's a very basic, <laughs> a 
early 90s <laughs> uh, acid house beat um, in this very small amount of information. So all that is is, again, these clocks set to certain values are hitting these if statements. And when the numbers match, it's triggering a beat. So if I know that I want the hi-hats to go sort of alternate every two beats and I want this the clap to hit sort of at a certain point in each measure, that's just sort of the math of that, if that makes sense. Um, and this is like a really powerful way, again, in a short amount of time to just be able to like immediately create a beat. And, and we can obviously change these numbers. Uh, but that's like, if statements are really powerful, if you um, if you know where you want things to go. Uh, there was just this question, do you basically always code with one hand on the arrow keys? Um, I think I do. I don't think everyone does. Uh, I, I, I tend to use Orca to sort of code and build an instrument, and then I, I almost play it live, like I'm playing a keyboard or a set of, of drum pads. Um, oh, if you type in a letter and the cursor doesn't move, you can actually, if you hit Command I, you go into Insert Move, and you can keep typing. So if I want to type something really fast, I can put it in that mode and just type. The only reason I wasn't doing that, that's right, Vim mode, is um, because I was trying to, to be able to hit spacebar quickly enough to stop it. So I'm not blasting you with music this whole time. But normally, yeah, when I'm live, I'm in the insert mode because it is faster. But even in the insert mode, I do end up having my hands on the, on the arrows a lot because I'm moving around the screen really quickly. Um, cool. So now if statements allow us to not just sort of do these really, these beats we already know, but we can use them to sort of do generative music um, that uh, may not involve patterns we do know. We can use it to create new patterns. So the way we can think about that is we can have clocks set at different values coming into both inputs of the if statement. And you may say, well, there isn't enough room to, to do that here. And you would be right. And that gets us into two of the most interesting uh, operators in the guide, J and Y, which are the same, which basically allow you to save space. J takes whatever's on the top and moves it to the bottom. So it allows you, I'll put this one up really high, to uh, it allows you to now this clock is up here instead of interfering with the other clock. Why actually does this same thing horizontally? So this allows you to sort of it's not the only way to transport values in Orca, but it's it's a, a very quick way. Um, so. We can, we can, but I'll, I'll make this a little simpler as opposed to showing off. Um, and uh, let's, so now we have these clocks. And basically, we can set the clocks to different values and see what that does. And then we can put clocks on those values, right? There's nothing stopping us from doing that.
So that obviously was not a, a pattern that I had in mind. That was just me sort of playing around with these chains of clocks and feeding clocks into clocks that eventually go into an if statement. And uh, then in those situations, those numbers line up and you get these really amazing patterns, if that makes sense. Um, and you can do a ton in Orca just by like copying and pasting chains of these and uh, do a lot. Yeah, and so this is a question. Can you read out the if statement? Sort of say it in pseudocode. Yes. Um, so in this case, this clock is basically at the normal rate, so one frame a tick. It's moving up to the number three. So it's going 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. And that's feeding into this if statement. Uh, so here, I'll make this so it's not blaring in your ears while, while it happens. Um, so this, I'm, I'm looking at the, this one on, on the left. So that, this clock that I'm highlighting right now is, is counting up to three. And it's counting up to three with the normal master clock. This if statement, so on the input A, there's just that clock counting up to three. On the other input, there's a clock modulating how, how high this clock is counting up to. <laughs> So this clock is counting up to eight and changing how high this clock is counting up to. And then that's going into the end statement. And when those two numbers match, it's banging. I don't know if that's really what you meant by um, reading it up, but that's, yeah, whoever just said an LFO clock, that's exactly right. It is, it is an LFO clock. That is, it's exactly what's happening. It's, it's oscillating and that's it. Um, but say you didn't want it to oscillate. Uh, say you wanted it to behave a little more randomly. Well, there is an operator for that. R is random. And it's just minimum, maximum. And it's spitting out a random number between the minimum and the maximum. Yeah, the if is comparing what is on the east and west. And if true, it bangs to the south. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So... R, we can feed R into an if statement with whatever number, right? And now we can get a more random pattern and we can use the minimum maximum to sort of like decide how random we want it to be. It's a way of controlling the random. But this flow is sort of exactly the same of we're using an if statement and a couple randoms with certain boundaries to sort of invent a pattern that allows some amount of randomness depending on how we make these uh, go. Um, there's also, if we wanted to use Euclidean rhythm, which uh, basically Euclidean rhythm is, is all about division. It's about dividing a set of values into rests and beats. Question, do the randoms keep with the main clock? Yes, they do keep with the main clock. Um, there are ways you can make them not keep with the main clock, which if you want me to, I can, I can get into. But that's when um, lowercase comes in really handy because we can put a different clock that's counting more slowly onto an if statement. and turn the random on and off, if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, so you can, that's where like sort of lowercase comes comes really in handy. Um, so Euclidean, just to show you real quick, uh, uh, allows you to do um, a lot of, say you wanted to do an African rhythm. So these values are the number of steps and the maximum divisions. So that's another way to create like really, really interesting patterns. And 
by sort of increasing these values, we can make them happen way less often. Um, and one thing that's important to know about Orca is uh, there's a lot of different ways to do the same thing. So, so there are actually faster ways to do a lot of the stuff I'm doing, but this is kind of the simplest or one of the simplest ways to interact with it. And you can do so much even just with using D statements and nothing else. I mean, you can, you can, you know, just, just have a, a bunch of, a ton of little things banging at, at different intervals, basically, um, and hook these all up to different drums. And I've made whole grids going to different samples that, that just do this. Um, Great question. On MIDI, how would you play a C sharp? All right, so that question actually leads into the next thing we were going to get to. But um, the lowercase letters are the sharps if it's a note input. So C sharp is, is lowercase c, and D sharp is lowercase d, and E sharp is lowercase e. But E sharp doesn't exist, so that'll just play an F. But um, F sharp is lowercase f. Um, it's like the one one like thing about Orca that's actually like a little edge casey. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, you can do a lot with just um, just these little things. But let's say you wanted to actually build build a step sequencer. Let's say you wanted to be able to like enter where you want beats to happen sort of without having to do the math of all those clocks. Well, there's this operator T. <clears throat> and T has this, the one just to the left of the T is length. And because we're in this weird alphanumeric base 36, let's make it G, so that's 16, because that's what step sequences are. So now we have these 16 steps, these little dots. And here it says key, and that means which key you're on. So if I start putting numbers in this, I don't know if you can see it, but the, the highlighted white dot is moving. So let's put a clock there, and again, let's make it G. And now it's sort of running through this line. And one thing I can do is I can place beats on that line, right? So I'm just putting asterisks, which are bangs, on this line. And now it has this bang output. And if I hook that up to a drum, we just built this little step sequencer. And I can very easily So T is really cool because as you just saw really quickly, you can basically build a sequencer ju just like that out of this code and, and control every part of it in a way you couldn't normally. Like if we change the value going into the clock, if we make that random with G, it's only gonna pick certain parts of this line to go to. And this, by the way, wasn't planned. I just, this is off the top of my head. So you can control all sorts. Question, can you output other things than bangs? Yes, and we are about to get to that because that's where things get really fun. I'm just going to show one last example, one last example. Um, or actually, no, I'm going to show that. So it's time to get into notes. So forget outputting bangs. Let's get into notes. So let's use T again. And let's make the length 4. 
And uh, let's just do C, E, G, A. So now I can put this clock here and have it just go up to four. And I want this clock to be slowed down maybe. So now it's 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 shoving out this uh, this sort of this this sequence of, of notes C G A, and just to have a little more room, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump that, um, and then I'm gonna put the MIDI signal here, and and I know that the the note goes in the third slot. So this is now this note, and then I'm gonna make this one, which is channel two. And I'll make it octave one, why not? And now, real quick, I'm just going to make this play. So I'm just going to make this bang the whole time. So there we're using this tracker to output these four notes and feeding those notes into our little MIDI sort of channel sender, send a MIDI note. And then I'm just banging it based on whatever number uh, uh, I want. Um, but if we want to get, say we wanted to automate, and I'm just going to do this really quick, that behavior that I was just doing. I was just changing this number that was feeding into when this would bang. And, and I want to show this to show how you sort of deal with things get very cramped in Orca. They get really, you're sort of limited by space. So I'm going to put a, a J here above this two and then a Y. So now basically this number is feeding into the D. And then I'm gonna do the same trick we did before. I'm gonna do A, and I'm gonna add one, and I'm gonna do a clock. Um, and then say, I'm going to do this even though it might sound insane. Um, so this is the octave, right? This little guy right here. Even though I don't really have room for it, just as an experiment, I'm going to throw a clock on it to see what happens. So as you can see, you can, you can inject controls and numbers anywhere <laughs> and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but I, I think that's like an important thing to show and know that like pretty much anything in any sort of orca code you can smash at any moment for both better and worse you can just it, there, there's not a lot that isn't uh impactable it's um it'll really react to anything and it it uh again if we if we just like real quick make this Thank you.
So just like that, <laughs> you can you can sort of build these crazy things. Question: Can I input a control voltage MIDI and then modulate the pitch? Do you, do you mean from an external source? The, the, the short answer is yes. Uh, you sort of can convert things back and forth, but it, it really depends on what exactly you're doing. Um, but yes, people use Orca to control modular synthesizers. Um, yeah, I mean, it, dep it depends exactly what you're trying to do, but it's sort of a more, it's sort of a more complex question, but um, you can definitely modulate the pitch in, in Orca. There's, there's lots of ways. Um, but uh, yeah, so cool. So, so we've looked at how to make notes in a sequence and we've looked at, uh, we're now getting into sort of uh, not just rhythm, but music. Um, but now we're gonna get to the part that's really fun. <laughs> now, now we're gonna get to the real, the real show. Um, which is Orca, as you know, has these bangs and it has this coordinate grid. It, it has physics and there's four operators in Orca that do not work like the rest. Um, and those are the cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. As you can see, they travel across the screen in that direction. And when they hit something, anything, they bang. It's like having a little uh, shooter game with you at all at all times. <laughs> You can, you can just shoot beats. Um, and that allows you to do some really crazy stuff. <laughs> so let's look at this next operator, G, and G is for generator. And it, and it has this X and Y, right? And then it has length, and then it has input. And if we change this length, oh wait, I just, mess the generator. See, this is what happens. You mess up an orca and it, it all goes to hell. Um, let's make this length B. And then just to have fun, baby castles. And now I'll do something without even music just to show how the generator works. So X and Y are going to generate this at those coordinates. So right now it's at zero, zero. So it's here, but we just put some clocks. <laughs> now it's just generating baby castles all over the place. Um, so you can actually use Orca to do all sorts of, of, of visual stuff, to do game of life stuff, to, uh, um, to do a, a sort of neat patterns. I'll make it a nicer pattern. Um, but the point of this is just to show that, that the X and Y uh, can sort of be used to move and generate anywhere. Um, and why that matters is, well, my favorite thing to do in Orca is um, to use a generator to send bangs. So we have this, we know that X moves up and down. So if I put a clock here, Oh, sorry, X moves. I did that in the wrong one. X moves to the side. If I if I put a, a clock here, now we're going to get these beautiful little E's flying across the screen. And again, I'm going to I'm going to make this a G because the letter G is 16 and we like 16 and, you know, Western canon electronic music. And now I'm just going to place some notes. Whoop, 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 whoop
making generators throw the cardinal directions across the screen and collide with nodes. Um, you can also do, it doesn't have to be this straight, like all sorts of people use this to uh, actually play with geography almost. Like you can, uh, people have put notes, overlaid Orca on top of a, a geographic map and put notes where buildings are and then just found out what that sounded like. <laughs> Um, so there's all sorts of ways you can use both the, the generation of the cardinal directions and the cardinal directions to do stuff. You can also use this to, to generate the thing you want to play with. So like here, I will actually generate I can, I can, instead of having to type out all the notes, I can just ge generate them <laughs> and then grab them and copy them and then set this, this back to one and set it back to, a, to an E. Um, and then whenever I want to paste it, I have it. So generators are very, very, very cool. Um, the two last things I'll talk about, uh, yeah, I'll talk about how to comment stuff out because that's really useful. Um, there's, there's a shortcut to comment out if you wanted to comment out a block of code. So you can hold down shift to select blocks in, in every direction. And you can hold down command at the same time to speed it up. And you can just do command question mark comments it out as, as a sort of as a block, but you can do comments one by one just with uh, hash marks. So that little pound key, we can just go up here and write hello everyone. Right? That that's that's now just text. Um, and even if I made it capital letters. Hello everyone, how are you? And now you'll see what happens as soon as I uncomment this. It becomes code, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> becomes code that, that works, um, that, will, that will do stuff. So you can actually like use that to do all sorts of random cool stuff. You can write things and, and see what will happen um, to it. Uh, but you can use commenting out as sort of a way to do drops, to have, have moments come in and out of your music. And you can also use cut and paste that way. Um, I'll, I'll like write a bunch of code, comment it out, cut it out inside the comment marks, and then paste it so it's happening live. Because since you don't have to evaluate your code, it'll just happen. So, you know, if I write in here 1D4 colon 01C, um, and I, and I, cut this and then I, it'll just fire. Uh, is there a console, some way to figure out errors? Um, no, because, uh, how do I put this? Um, there isn't, you're just limited to, to these operators and that's it. And even though it is technically a programming language and a Turing complete programming language, there, there isn't, there isn't syntax to sort of evaluate. 
<laughs> um, it's it, yeah. There, there's no errors. There there are unexpected results, but um, it's mostly just uh, making sure that inputs and outputs are going to, together. Is there a way to get an output to trigger one like beat of one two three four instead of when you finish typing? Do you have to use an if statement for that? So. Um, yeah, I was actually about to get to that. I think I understand what you're getting to, but um, hold on one sec. So in the cut and paste example for a drop, how how might you make sure you paste on the dot beat? That that's just that's just playing it like an instrument, which not everyone likes to do, but I like to do. Um, yeah, I mean it's just a sense of of rhythm. Um, operators like Q, which use um, yeah, so actually, so this is one thing that's a little funny, which is I, I actually use the older version of Orca <laughs> when Q was different. <laughs> this is the, the newer version, and a bunch of the operators changed. Um, but, but basically, um, Q, Q is a way to, you can send stuff a whole block of a note information to that place. Um, so uh, if, if it's it's sort of about like using the geography to to place a block of information where where you want, if if that makes sense as a question. Um, so if I want this note, oh, I just I just broke it to uh, to all of a sudden. Um, So all of a sudden uh, transport correctly. Oh, right, they change it so it reads. This changes where you're reading it. Sorry, yeah, yeah, that's the change they made. So, so now it's reading whatever's in this note, and then you can transport it if that makes sense. That that's what Q does. I don't know if that answers your question. I I, I hope it does. Um, but uh, it's um it's a way to to pull things. Which is there's two last things I'm gonna get to real quick. Um, the first is. Uh, so we sort of covered how to do beat one with with this tracker tool to, to that question of if if I make this length four, I can just make it bang on the fourth beat, right? So now it's just banging on the fourth beat. That's one way to do it, but you can do it. You can do it with if statements. You can do it a, a bunch of different ways. You can do it with space with a, with a generator. You know, I, if, if I know where the fourth beat is sort of in, in this, either on the X or Y axis, and I put a note there, it'll bang. So now it's banging on the fourth beat. Um, OK, last things. Lowercase letters, I just want to show sort of why they're useful. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom out a little bit. Um, I'm going to create two generators. Uh, and I'm going to have them. I have them go up to eight to make things a little easier um, on myself. And and yeah, I'm de I'll definitely uh, I'll definitely show pilot at the end. Um, it just takes there's one thing about streaming I have to change, but it'll be it'll be no problem. Um, so, say that we have two different sequences, and we want them to run in sequence, right? Like. We, we don't want them to run at the same time. We, we, we want one to run after the other one. Because if I hit spacebar, so I'll just make some random octave notes here. Four, two, and this one. Let's do this one. Let's make them all A's. Why not? So if I hit these. If I run this, they'll run at the same time, and, and MIDI won't know exactly what to do. Well, lowercase letters allow a way out of this. Because if there's lowercase letters, they're only going to run when they bang. 
So I can put an if statement, and now this one's running. And if I make that one, and I make a clock that goes up to two, and it goes up to two every eight ticks, so so that's the way that uh you can start getting into bigger bigger blocks of code bigger sequences and you can use clocks and if statements to actually sequence sequences which is how you can get into like bigger sort of song composition um the more advanced way of doing this which uh, most people I feel like who use Orca do more than me, and I, I rarely do it live, um, but it is more useful, is um, Orca has variables. And so you can write a value into a variable. So uh, I'm gonna write, I'll make this easy, one into to A and two into B. And then if I put, a variable below this. If I read one, it outputs A, and I read two, it outputs B. I don't know if you can see that. But, but that's a way you can store values and then and then transpose them. Uh, the question was, could you share that clock? And this is exactly how you can <laughs> share the clock, is, is with variables. Um, is is uh, Or you can use J's and Y's, or you can use um, X transports things based on XY coordinates. So if you run out of room, you can always use X, <laughs> where the input, if this input is eight, I can put an eight wherever I want on the grid. You know, it'll it'll just move move this eight around wherever wherever I want this eight. Um, but variables are are really powerful because you can store these values, uh, and and so you can have a whole bunch of variables at the top, which change the behavior of your entire sort of creation <laughs> um, in, in all sorts of ways. Uh, so those are, that's like the super basics of Orca. It's it's very deep. I, I still learn things with it every time that I mess with it. Um, I will really quick, just so you can see it, to use pilot instead of Ableton, we're actually just changing the operator. No, nothing else, literally nothing else is changing, except every time I did a colon, instead of doing a colon, I would do a semicolon. And a semicolon sends UDP messages. And, and then it's exactly the same. This, this uh, pilot is just l listing these, can I make this bigger? I can. These um, these are just channels with different sounds. So if I do zero, in Orca, if I do zero, one, C, and yes, you can also send to OSC, um, which is incredible. OSC is, uh, I'll just double check that I'm right. Yeah, it's equals. Um, so, so pilot is, uh, really powerful on its own. Um, I, I forget if I said this in, in both UDP and MIDI after note, there's velocity and then length. So that's how you can change the length of a note and how loud it is. And that's just using sort of MIDI logic. Um, but if I make this, I think F, for example, is uh, a nice bass drum or something.
um, both go from A to Z. What do you mean exactly <laughs> to that question? Oh, yeah, velocity zero to nine and then A to Z. This UDP protocol is specific to pilot. Um, I, I Yeah, there's some specific things about it. I don't, I how they actually did it, I'm not sure, but I've seen the protocol work with other UDP things. So I, I thought it was specific, but live I've seen people occasionally do things which suggest it, it might not be. Um, but uh, the, the first part, Seem, seems to work for most UDP music things, but I don't know a lot about UDP, so that's secondhand. Um, so the point is you can use Pilot. This is, Pilot has its own sort of code, but basically you can edit each of these change, channels um, by, by changing the values uh, and, then, and then get a different result. I'll show one more really cool tool, which I just discovered which someone made for Orca, which is a, a granular sampler controlled by MIDI. So this is called Cassetter. Um, and if I, let's see if I can really quick, like add a sample to this. Um, why not? This is also super unplanned. Um, drum packs. Yeah, why not? here we go. Okay. Select samples folder. Oh, enter. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Cool. And this, see if I can get this to work. Um, so this, we're actually going to use the MIDI knob control, which if you see in the guide um, is an exclamation mark, MIDI control change. So MIDI CC. Um, and that way, we can control each of the knob values on this sampler, which is wild. So uh, this is controlling now volume. I don't know if you can see it change. Um, but it's, it's now controlling the volume. Um, to start it, I'm trying to remember, how do I make it fire? How do I make it fire? What is it? Uh, I'm trying to remember. I'm gonna have to look it up. But anyway, Cassetta is really cool. Um, it's uh, I literally played with it for the first time, maybe two nights ago. But that's another example of a tool. But but you can use Orca with anything. Um, like I can real quick. Uh, like now it's con controlling all that as I spill water all over the place. But, uh, so it, it can it can work with anything. Yeah. So any other questions? And I'm, I'm very emailable and contactable, and I'm happy to talk about Orca all the time. Is there a place where Orca people usually talk about it? Yes, there is. And I will actually put it in the chat. Um, lines uh, is, is, the, is the place. Um, the, I'm getting this for you. Um, Lines is this has its own Orca channel, uh, which is just super great. Um, can you send commands to other Orca over the network? Uh, not, yeah. The short answer is yes. I mean, it's like Orca. There are versions of Orca that run in C. There are versions of Orca that run in the terminal. You you can definitely build that. There isn't a way to do it like. I don't think there's a way you can do it super natively, but it wouldn't it wouldn't be that hard to build. Um, it, uh, it's definitely doable and it's definitely easy to, to send things from Orca to, to anything. So you could send one Orca to another Orca. Uh, you would have to hack it a little bit, but it's, it's built for that. So, 
Um, thank you so much for all your great questions and bearing with me. And uh, I'm, I'm always psyched to talk about this. And um, yeah, please feel free to, to email or, or reach out. And um, work is the best. It's really like, uh, it's really changed, changed the way that I, I make music. Um, Oh yeah, is there a question we missed? Let me know. Let me know if there's any any questions. Oh man, uh, play some. <laughs> oh oh, the question about um dropping. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a learn thing, but um, it depends on the music. Um. I don't actually have music set up to, I actually had to like set this up in a way to make the workshop really good that doesn't, I don't know if there's a way I can set it up to like really jam right now. Um, but uh, that's that's sweet of you to, to ask Lee. But um, yeah, there's also, I'll, I'll plug real quick. I know some of you are here from there, but there's a great, greater live coding community in, in based in New York City, Live Code NYC that, um, is another great space for for this sort of stuff um, and friend of baby castles so yeah thanks so much everybody